Location-based uh, services are quite interesting. Foursquare is actually uh, getting more and more important for several brands here in Italy as well, uh, mm -hmm. which have, you know, they simply uh, have offers for mayors or um, uh, first check-in um, discounts, ten percent off, and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Do you think how how do you think that could evolve actually? For the moment, it's it's just like that, like uh, ten or ten percent off for for, for check-in or uh, I don't know, a free drink for the mayor, yeah. for example. Do you think it can but, become something more important? I th I think it, yes, I think it will evolve. I think it will become more important. Now, whether the the today's players will be tomorrow's players is another question. Uh, I think there is a big danger that uh, Facebook will eat uh, Foursquare's lunch because you've got Facebook check-in deals and you've also got Facebook deals as well as check-in deals. So Facebook deals are the prepay version, like Google offers and Groupon, where people pay up front for a voucher that they then redeem in store. So and um, just simply because the size of Facebook, I think Foursquare is going to have to innovate fast um, fast to do it. But I, I think what we're seeing in with both Foursquare and, and Facebook is the evolution of a new kind of consumer focused CRM system, actually using uh, creating a customer relationship management platform using the social piping of social media, so whether it be Facebook, whether it be Foursquare, whether it be Twitter, but actually allowing uh, brands and retailers to connect with their best consumers, their fans, and drive loyalty by giving them exclusive previews, special offers, um, uh, exclusive content. And so I think we'll start seeing, rather than simply one-shot deals, I think we'll start seeing a new way of actually, rather than talking about CRM and relationship management, which brands have been doing for ages, consumer brands have been doing for ages, I think what Facebook and Foursquare and other social media platforms are doing are, are going to allow that to actually become a reality and rather than simply just spamming people with, with, with email. Mm. Yeah, I, I totally agree about that. Um, social CRM is a very hot topic at the moment. I, I've seen that in the last few weeks. Uh, many have talked about it, uh, we have talked about it, um, but do you think, to be social externally with your clients, do you think it is it's important and necessary to be social inside your company? Uh, yes, I do. Um... Because I, I, it depends what you mean by being social. I mean, we're social animals. You're a psychologist, I'm a psychologist. We know that social is a huge aspect. We are social animals. So whether we like it or not, businesses are social. But it's how they are social. If you mean do they embrace social technology, I think a business that doesn't embrace social technology itself is going to have a tough time understanding the consumer world, which is mediated now with social technology, so in order, I think you need in order to to understand it and profit from it. I think you need to be be able to do it to do it yourself. So it's quite odd to have a business to say, oh, we don't allow our employees to use Twitter or Facebook or so social media accounts, but we've got our own page where we connect with with consumers using it. I think there's a disconnect a disconnect there. So I think. Uh, Companies need to understand how social technology works, and the best place to learn is is internally, because there's less risk there. Yes, of course, of course, we're social animals. Uh, what I meant is, um, you know, the way management is structured and how companies are structured hierarchically doesn't actually allow um, to be social in in a technologic way. If you want, I mean. Uh, Companies don't know at the moment what kind of resources they have because they don't speak internally. Yeah. No, I think, I mean, there's one, um, I did a, 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 a um, an event where one very large company said, you know, if only our company knew what our company knows which is, goes to exact, exactly the point you're making. There is so much resource and talent within an organization, and social media is one way of allowing that talent to bubble to the top and to, to identify the great ideas, the great initiatives, and even sometimes you have the stop, don't do it um, type things. So I think it will make it smarter. However, at the same time, 
businesses need to have uh, a hierarchical structure. I think what we're seeing, what's interesting, I'm just still still working on the um, sort of contagious ideas and sort of social sense. I'm sort of working on a paper at the moment looking at, well, you know, what's happened in Egypt and the, the so-called Arab Spring. I mean, Twitter is great maybe to trigger and facilitate um, uh, to, people to come together and react against a, a regime. But actually, is it any good at organizing things in the long term? Is it just good for spontaneous things? I think the question's still still open. So I'm not sure running a company based on a relatively flat social, social media enhanced or oriented company is the best way for things to go because you get a load of noise and it's difficult you need to have a great way of filtering stuff I think it's a big challenge I mean it's a lovely idea um, there's almost de de democratization of businesses through social media but in reality I think you know as what Jeremy Bentham said you know the, 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 the philosophy you know, democracy is nonsense on stilts actually the thing doesn't work in principle and I think there's we've got to uh, sort of tackle that issue I mean before we get too excited everybody got super excited about Obama and it came together it was the social media you know gave everybody hope and then you know what's happened two or three years later you know he's, he's super unpopular um, so I've it doesn't just because you're open to social media. It doesn't necessarily make you good, and it, I'm not sure it's the, necessarily the best way forward. Yeah, I was I was going to ask you what your opinion about management is. If you're in love with management, management as it is, or do you think it should change? But I think you already answered that question. No, yeah, well, I'm sort of skeptical. I'm, I'm I'm skeptical of of. So I think you've got so many social media zealots out there who think it's going to change everything. Um, I think it's going to change a few things, but not everything. It's just one piece. It's a nice to have. 65% of retailers, um, you know, big retailers, say that if Facebook disappeared tomorrow, it wouldn't make one difference to their business. I think that's the truth. That social media is, to to a large extent, is kind of the. the, the it is trivial. It's it's uh, it, it isn't structural yet. I think it will get there, but we're in a transition period. And that's what the reason businesses need to be there today and management needs to be there today is not is not for what's there today. It's to learn about what's happening and to actually get on the journey, the train, because you, there are certain levels and stages and an evolution of mentality about how we can harness this this technology. And so waiting it out, saying, okay, let's wait until a company has done it right, I think is not the solution. They need to get in at the ground level and see what's actually happening and the potential for, their, for them as, as businesses. So... Um you were born in England. Yeah. And you live in the United States. Yeah. So you have um, a knowledge, a good knowledge about the, the differences between the old and the new continent. Uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, do you think there is a, a cultural difference between uh, countries, continents, when it comes to uh, Social marketing and um, social commerce. Yes, I do. Um, by the way, um, uh, yeah, yes, I, I do. And I, I've, by the way, I've, I'm going to have to shoot in a minute. So I've got another meeting um, at uh, actually midday. So if if I okay. have to cut off, we maybe pick this up pick this up later. But okay. um, but to answer your question, hopefully we'll get get through this. But. Uh, Yes, I think there are big cultural differences. There are people behave very differently, use technologies very differently. The, the way that what people are prepared to share, people's, what we know about, um, uh, what, will we know, what we know about privacy, people's relationship to privacy is very cult is cultural. So I think there are very different stages and not necessarily, and I don't think everybody's going to go through the same stages in terms of how they adopt, how they adopt technology. You know, people always want to, you know, technology is a facilitator. It allows people to do stuff better and faster and more cost effectively. And that's kind of universal. And the psychologist, we know that, you know, the human brain is the same. It doesn't matter whether you're black, yellow, green, blue, or whatever. That same, the, the, the human brain is wired in pretty much the same way. So there are certain universals. But I think in terms of how social media and social marketing is going to be adopted is going to be different based on culture and based on imperatives. 